Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Daryl. We want to welcome you all to Dad, We're Incarcerated Too. I am here with my lovely three beautiful, amazing, talented, in my pockets, <laughs> daughters. <laughs> and um, we're just getting back um, to begin our a podcast and we want to reintroduce ourselves and we'll start over here to my left. Hello everybody. Uh, my name is Aaliyah. Hi, I'm Raquel. Hi, I'm Jamila. And these are the Rogers girls. Right. Yeah. Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> um it's been a while since we have um been um on the podcast, um, simply we had, you know, a few things that have happened, um, particularly um, lost my mother uh, back in July, and it's just had been one thing after another, so we had decided that we need to just kind of step back a little bit, re-examine some things, um, and, uh, and get some therapy, you know, some counseling, um, some mediation, all that glorious stuff, you know, it's like, man, you know, the things that uh, we take for granted, people that we take for granted, you know, we think that they're going to be around, you know, forever, you know, forever is a long time. So, you know, um, so this uh, podcast we want to dedicate to my mother, their grandmother, um, the late uh Dr. Bishop Winnie Hamilton of Sunrise Ministries Global. Shout out to you, Ma. We love you. Yes, we love you, Grandma. We love you, Grandma. Um, we want to um, just really just get right on in and just you know, kind of talk about a few things that we have been dealing with um, since the last conversation that we had. Um, you know, we um, have gone a little bit further, a little bit deeper into um, you know, our issues. And uh, one of the things um, that we want to make sure that we continually stress um, about um, incarceration um, is that incarceration is never about the physical place that we're in. Incarceration is mental first. We're incarcerated long before we make it to the penitentiary, and some people don't even make it there. Um, we started this podcast because um, my daughter, Raquel, when I was incarcerated um, during her last visit to come see me, um, said to me, um, as I was talking, she said, well, Dad, we're incarcerated too. Mm -hmm. And I needed for her to define that for me. What does that mean? I'm the only one in here with this number, 484796. You know what I mean? I'm in here with... You know, these dress blues on, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, and so she began to break that down, you know, for me. So I'm going to turn that over to her so she can just kind of explain what her thoughts and feelings were um, around that. <laughs> At that time, um, the biggest thing that I was feeling was that pieces of myself was being taken from me, you know. Being out in the world, especially a child, and different activities and different programs that involve fathers, you know, on a daily basis, on a, um, whether as far as holidays or whatever, you know, it was like, I didn't have that. Mm -hmm. And um, it began to take a toll on me, even as a child, even though I didn't even always have the words for it, it was like, 
something was always missing from me. And it made me feel like I was just as chained as he was. Mm. And I couldn't take it. It was like, I'm, you know, I'm sitting here having this, we're having this conversation and I'm here to see him, you know, and it, I, I didn't realize, I'm looking at it now as an adult, but back then it was taking a toll on me that, not, that I didn't even understand. Mm. And it was like since then I had been living in chains. Like, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So what, what, type of, what type of things did you feel like that you missed out on during my time period of incarceration? Um, so they would have like, I can't, I'm not going to say I remember everything. I remember a couple of things. There was, um, what was it? It was like this ice cream with dads or something like that that I we had at our daycare. And it was exciting to think about, to hear about, especially as a child, you know, things like that is fun, little things, especially ice cream. But then I, it kind of, I kind of realized that um, I didn't have a dad to bring with me. Mm. And so it's like, where do you turn at that moment, mm. you know? And then there was another thing my grandmother, um, she had took me to a cotillion. And uh, girls were there with their fathers, you know, walking them down the aisle. And they would, they was handing us a, I can't remember, they handed us something, something significant as far as us growing into young girls, young ladies. And, you know, they were getting walked down the aisle by their fathers. And um, my grandmother had um, set someone up for me that she trusted, that she entrusted to walk me down that mm -hmm. aisle. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, you just don't realize what things actually mean. You know, sometimes, especially as a child, you're just feeling it. But it's like, it was, it was important to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, how do you feel, um, you know, in relation to, um, and I, let me, inter let me interject this, you know, um, I just wanted us to be clear too, um, for our listening audience that we have, my daughters and I have a great relationship. And I mean, I've been out of prison, um, for about 11 years now. And, um, you know, along with that, you know, I'm, uh, almost 11 years, uh, clean and sober, you know, thanks be to God, Thank right? You, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> um, so all the things that I used to do, you know, coming from, you know, a particular lifestyle that I lived in playing in baby land, that type of stuff, you know what I mean? Oh my God. As an addict also, um, <laughs> I um, had to redefine what my life was. And I started getting myself together while I was incarcerated, while I was in the penitentiary, you know what I mean? Now, I got over 20-something years in the system, but my incarceration started when I was four. My father threw me up against the wall and bust my head open. And uh, for years, I carried around those, that pain and those scars, masking my true self, you know, not being able, able to identify with love. My mother said that, um, the day that she left my father, I said, nobody loves me, so I don't love nobody at four years old. Mm -hmm. And that's how I lived my life for 40-something years, void and absent of love for others and for myself. You know what I mean? So I had a mask for every occasion. But as, but as God began to, to work on me and I began to submit my life to him, you know, the layers just began to pull back. You know what I mean? I was able to... Um, take off the disguises and be my true authentic self. Um, and it's interesting that when you don't have no crutches, you know what I mean? You know, you don't have the drugs, you don't have the alcohol, you don't have the other women, you know, you chose to leave all that alone. You're standing there butt naked. You know what I mean? It's like, man, what do I run to now? You know, how do I, you know, how do I deal with these feelings and these emotions, you know, that's going on that I'm just not accustomed to. Yeah. You know, I ain't accustomed to being in love. I ain't accustomed to feeling this, you know, type of, I need some medication. You know what I mean? And, um, but, you know, I learned um, how to work through that. And uh, one of the biggest things, and you all can talk about this too, um, that I needed to make sure that I showcase was um, stability. 
Yeah. You all needed to know that I'm planning, I ain't going nowhere. Right. You know, and, and that was big. Um, so, any questions or comments about that? <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about that? I feel like, you know, it's, I think that it's great, you know, where we, where you um, were able to evolve, we all were able to evolve, and um, I think that it was divine timing, you know, when um, you came into our lives, um, and I'm, you know, I've been forever grateful. Um, now, like, having dad in my life, I... <laughs> I was just talking to him on the way here about some stuff. And it's so crazy because, you know, we could just really relate, you know, because, I mean, we all are going through similar things, you know, or have gone through similar things. And I think that's one of the, like, you know, the really good parts of um, having a dad um, in my life. And... So glory to God, you know, that you're not in that place that you were 20 years ago, 10 years ago, you know what I mean? Or we wouldn't be sitting right here. Um, mm. Yeah. Yeah. And so I even feel like there was a time in which I didn't want to talk to dad about <coughs> my relationship right. issues or my mm. pain and suffering or nothing like that. <laughs> but I was just like, now I was just like, let me call my dad because I need that type of advice. Mm -hmm. Well, why didn't you want to talk to me? We didn't have that relationship. Okay. I didn't know you. You didn't know me. You yeah. know, it wasn't like, um, I didn't feel comfortable. You know, it wasn't a safe space yet. Mm. Um, so. That's important. Right. Yeah, you got to have a safe space. space. You got to yeah. feel safe. You got to, you know, um, know that you're not going to be judged. Or at least if, you know, you have something to say, it's going to be with care. You mm. know, it's not just going to be like, mm -hmm. well, you need to that. I told you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, oh, I'm your father. You do what I tell you to do. <laughs> right. Like right, right. right now. Right. You like Jamila, go like get me that. another energy drink right now. <laughs> and that's when you got to practice boundaries. <laughs> 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 right, 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 right. You got to do right. You can't right. get like that sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Not with the serious stuff, though, right? Mm -hmm. Like the relationships and stuff. Yeah. Well. I guess I've maybe had in the my way different share of experience. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I guess maybe in the way that like you say things sometimes, at least for me, right? But I think that you know, that's you being you and I can't I can't like expect you to be a different person. But there it know? is though, I mean, like I'm giving you the game from a from a father's perspective and a man's perspective. Mm -hmm. If I give it to you, if I give you all the game from a father's perspective, then there really is no game because I'm gonna sugarcoat it because I don't wanna hurt your feelings. Right. You know what I mean? If I give it to you from a man's perspective, you know what I mean? It's, it, you know, ain't no hoes bar, man. You know, I'm gonna come, I'm, it's, it's gonna be in the raw. <laughs> it's gonna be good grapes, sweet nectar off the vine. Oh my you know what I mean? <laughs> Stability that you created allows us to trust you to do that for us too. Yeah. yeah. To take that risk and allow, you know, for us to be able to hear what you have to say and it actually take effect. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That um I'm always talking about this, I know, but it's like it's the risk. You know, that mm -hmm. being vulnerable and then taking a risk and being met with that uh with what you need the realness that you need mm -hmm. you know especially in the keep it going which i know this is something we wanted to talk about the healing um because the stability in itself is like it created a trickle effect it's like um trusting in you <laughs> let me see how do i want to explain this it's like it gives me a place to be free and make my mistakes and be vulnerable and then work on myself and still know that I'm loved and valued at mm. the end of the day. It's like it lays it's it's laid a foundation that now now as I'm healing and as I'm growing, we connecting on different levels, so many different levels that yeah. we didn't even know existed as individuals and as a family unit. It's like I know I'm still learning how to be a daughter to a father, mm -hmm. but it's like the 
creation of the connection is part of, is the some of the best part. For sure. Like realizing, like, wow, here we are again, right, right, but right, we right. on this another level of it. <laughs> right, right, right. So different, yeah. And you know, yeah. you said something I think that was so powerful, and that was, you know, about you know being loved and feeling valued, mm -hmm. because I think that what has gone out of the equation is that, and we've coined this, that children's feelings and words matter yeah you know what i mean no matter what the age is yeah. you know and everything mm -hmm. right because you know if you look at the children today they don't you know kids don't have a voice man they can't mm -hmm. say no i don't want y'all to get divorced you know what i mean i don't want y'all to separate or you know uh, you know mommy get off them drugs or daddy you know get out of prison you know they don't they don't get the opportunity to express how they feel yeah. you know what i mean so not you know quite naturally what they do is that they bottle it up and they become a teenager Mm -hmm. And all that stuff is lingering. Yeah, yeah, I definitely uh, agree. Uh, angry and hurt teenager at times because <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that you be uh, at a certain age, you don't even realize the emotions that you're going through. They just mm -hmm. there, and you just acting on them. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when we talk about the safe space. It is very uncomfortable to get to know somebody who you feel like you never knew. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to let somebody in because you always question it. You're not really trustworthy because you had the opportunity to be here and you weren't. For whatever reasons, ain't no blame, ain't no shame. People get it how you live, whatever. But um, that's when we go back to the healing. There are certain conversations that we need to have. And, you know, we just had a conversation recently mm -hmm. in which we talked about things that we've never talked about before. Yeah. Oh, and uh, it was very uncomfortable for me. For me, too. And, <laughs> but it was, um, it, was, it was hard to hear some things, some certain truths, and it was even harder to say those truths, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, but what it really gave me was a sense of... Not stability, but it helped me feel more grounded with my life mm. because I'm mm. releasing certain things that when I was a teenager, I couldn't even put these into words how I was feeling. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But now that I'm older, I can, I can express it better, number one. But you gave me the platform and the space to be able to express it without fault, without anger, without rejection. All of those, I was able to have that place, that safe space. To do that and not feel like okay, he ain't gonna leave me though. Like we talked about before, that mm -hmm. feeling of um, that worthlessness comes because you know we constantly are being around people who don't respect us, value us, cherish us. And so when you actually meet somebody, this goes for father daughter relationship yeah. to relationship. When you actually meet somebody who is willing to go that extra mile for you, it's hard to comprehend. Mm -hmm. It's like wait a second. But when you allow <laughs> yourself to um, feel and hear where they're actually coming from, it's like God just opened it up in you. Now you mm -hmm. got to say it. it. It's just flowing now. Mm -hmm. The uh, conversation is flowing. The tears is flowing. The pain is flowing. Everything is flowing out of you, though, mm -hmm. because it's things that we needed to release that now we finally have the words to say it. And even if you don't have the words to say it, uh, I think just... As the adult, as the parent, you have to bring up those certain things. You have to ask your kids questions, especially the younger ones. How do you feel about this? When I did this, how did that make you feel? Mm -hmm. How can I be a better parent to you today and tomorrow and from here on out? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you'll be very surprised at the things that they say. Because it is simple, but it's hard for you to, uh, I guess, as people, it's hard, for us to, it's hard for us to acknowledge our faults and our wrongs especially and the children yeah mm -hmm. yeah and because we think that they don't even understand mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you didn't even understand what was going what was happening when you was five years old but i did in some way shape or form i did and then mm -hmm. that's why people start acting out and they uh pre-adolescence and stuff and then now you adult you're going back and forth to jail because there's certain things that happen in your past that you never got to reconcile with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we hold so much anger that people will pass away and you didn't even get to have a conversation with them that would have helped you free yourself in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And that's a big yeah. thing. Yeah. That's a big, big thing because it happens a lot. And then it, and it just keep going down from next person to the next person, generation after generation. Mm -hmm. We just dying with 
with all this trauma still sitting on you, how you can't even breathe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're not even breathing. You're just out here surviving. And I think that's one of the biggest things that we're trying to break is, you know, learning how to live, mm-hmm. how to live our lives without all the baggage, freeing ourselves because it's heavy. Mm. It get heavy. I think that, um, oh, you have something more to say, man? No, I'm listening. I think that for, I, and, we, and we have to, you know, get here too for parents, um, it's, it's hard to be vulnerable to your children um, because we have a certain persona, you know, um, that we have to uphold and, and, and look and be like. Mm-hmm. Like, we don't want to show our children our weakness. But the reality of it is, you already showing your, ch- your child mm-hmm. your weakness. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you've given them the, the opportunities to make choices based on what they see. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah. you tell the child, don't do as I do, but do as I say. No, that never works. It never, never, never ever. Works. Ever. <laughs> ever. Let me say it again. That never, never <laughs> works. Because children are visual. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they, you know, it's like monkey see, monkey do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I ain't calling nobody monkey. I'm just saying that those <laughs> expression. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's a hard place and you know, like you know, the space you know that I had to put myself in was a place where um, I had to have self conversation, you know. And the conversation was about how bad do I really want my children in my life? Mm-hmm. You know, how how close do I really want to get to my children? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And how close do uh, my children want to get to me? Okay, well then, you know, <laughs> if they say something out they mouth. You know, that I don't like, you know, during the time period that we have conversations. I got to hold my stuff. I got to hold my peace. And it wasn't always like that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because, you know, I'm, you know, because our, 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 <laughs> our parental, you know, our parental, our parental caps come on where we, where we, you know, say there's a certain way that you need to address me. Yeah. But during these types of, of conversations, um, we have to let go of what was and embrace what is. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the expression from your child out of anger, out of anxiety, Mm -hmm. out of being incarcerated, you know, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally, it's going to come out in a mannerism that may very well be disrespectful. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So what would you rather have, right? Would you rather have a sit-down conversation with your child and allowing them to express themselves by any means necessary in that conversation where they have to yell it out, scream it out, and maybe cuss it out? Or would you rather have your child in the streets yelling, fussing, cussing, and fighting and get a bullet in the head or pull out the gun and put a bullet in somebody else's head or whatever, however that's going to go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, it don't always go like that, but I'm just giving out different scenarios. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Where children yeah. act out. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you got some children that may act out. I mean, some children, they do what they do and they wind up making it through college and different things like that. But what are the issues that they have? Because their relationships is off the hook. Mm. You know, they done went from relationship to relationship to relationship, and they keep yeah. wondering, well, what the hell is going on, right. you know? And they, we keep blaming the other individual. Yeah. And I'm going to give you this, I'm going to let y'all talk. My sponsor, he told me one time, he said, man, he said, when he was going through our, our, our thing, I think he was going through uh, the, the second or the third step. Um, and, um, so then he, he said, I want you to go in the bathroom, go in the mirror, and I want you to look in the mirror and I want you to say issues, you know, 40 times. I say, man, come on, bro. What is this all about, right? He said, no, dear, I want you to go in the bathroom. I want you to say issues 40 times. I said, all right, cool. I just got up, you know, went into the bathroom, you know, popping my collar, making sure I'm grown, you know what I mean, all that, man, you know. Yeah, and so I began to say issues, 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 issues. Issues, issues, 
issues, issues, issues, <laughs> issues, 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 you, is you, is you, is you. I said, man, come <laughs> on, bro. And the issues that I was having issues with was me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I had to come to grips with that. That it wasn't everybody else. It wasn't these other, it was me. And it's the unresolved that I didn't have with my father. Mm, it's the unresolved yeah. that I didn't have with my mother. It's all of those first relationships, yeah. mm -hmm. you know what I mean, that just had me masking and, you know, pointing the fingers and trying to numb my feelings. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, for sure. Those yeah. first relationships are really important. I mean, it's the first thing that you see, you know. So if you in a household where there is, like, no stability, parents arguing all the time or you only got one parent or you know there's just like a lot of chaos you grow up in a chaotic home I mean how do you think I mean the world around you seems chaotic at that point you mm. know what I mean and that's what you grow up in chaos and then that's all you know so now you're in a relationship that's chaotic but for you it's normal yeah. but you're living your life steadily wow. at a like you're literally living your life at a point of anxiety every day, but it's so normal for you, you don't even think about it. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? That's yeah. an excellent point. <clears throat> I mean, because, yeah, that's all you know. And, like, even, um, um, you know, when I was going out into the world and friendships and relationships or whatever, you know, um, I didn't really know what exact like the type of person that I was supposed to be in a relationship or a friendship. I kind of was just going off of what I saw on TV or what I saw around me or um and at the end of the day, I was never happy in those friendships or relationships. So, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because I didn't really know what it was supposed to be like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Had I seen that you know, with my parents or something like that, I think it definitely would have been different. And like, also, I remember talking to my sisters about this maybe like a couple months ago. We were talking about the relationships, getting into relationships and having this false idea of what it's supposed to be like, this whole fairy tale thing. Like, you know, you watch the movies and mm -hmm. the guy gets the girl, but then he messes up. And then right. <laughs> at the end of the movie, he comes back, you know, with some long, drawn out, sorry, whatever, and then they wind up getting together. So I thought that's how I'm supposed to be. You know, you're supposed to. <laughs> right. I literally did. I lived I lived in that fairy tale. I thought it was supposed to be like that because mm. I didn't have really anything else to look at. You right, know what right, I mean? Right. So yeah, you never really know, like, how certain things are playing into your psyche until so you really sit back, you know, and self-reflect and, you know, think about, what it was you were lacking, you know, where you found uh, your sol what you found your solace in, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think I think that the parents in the home um, is really important. And going back to what you said about parents not wanting to show their weaknesses and everything, I think I can understand a parent not wanting to show their weaknesses to their child, right? Because you're supposed to be a role model, somebody they can look up to and everything like that. But I think one of the I think that I'm not necessarily necessarily sure if it's a weakness. I think you just having a human experience, mm -hmm. and that I think the most important part though about having the human experience is how you handle it afterwards. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm. That's the part that they're really going to look at. Like, yeah. um, you know, with you and my mom. I mean, I've watched you all go through things or whatever um, individually, and how you all came out of it. That is what stuck with me as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That was like, that's resilience. That's how I want to be. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I yeah. think that part is important too. Absolutely. Yeah. I think when you speak on, well, it's a couple of things I want to speak on. But weakness, um, I think it's not a weakness, but not showing your kids that vulnerable side of you mm -hmm. yeah. teaches them to grow up in a world where they got to be this way and that way. Mm -hmm. And instead of showing them a healthy way to release and handle their emotions, they just got to be top dog, big boy, all the way around. And um, especially in our black communities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think that is another thing that parents should work on is learning how to be vulnerable. It's not about them, how, how they may look at you or whatever. It's about how you are showing them that this is how I'm feeling and this is how I'm going to get through it. 
Yeah. And this is how I expect you to handle life as well. Right. Teaching them emotion words, you yeah. know, how to label what they're feeling. And giving them emotional <laughs> support as yeah. well. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think you, parents should tell all their business to right. all their kids. Right. I agree. But I do think that there should be a conversation because kids pick up on things. We mm-hmm. notice when your energy is off. We could tell, I, I mean, I came from you. I already know I'm already attached in that way. Mm-hmm. So if you off, I'm going to be off. Mm-hmm. And if you're not speaking to me about why you off, then I'm just off. And you get even more frustrated because now I'm acting a fool because I'm trying to figure out why mommy and daddy is vibing like this. But I don't really know how to say that. And they're not telling me nothing. So I'm going to just do whatever I can to get this certain type of attention. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, I forgot what else you spoke on that I wanted to talk about. But... Uh, Oh, yeah, the self-love, I mean, the love or whatever. My mentor, which I hope everybody decides to get a mentor one day, said that people can only love you at the capacity that you can love yourself. Mm. And so um, I do believe, like, your parents and siblings, they'll love you unconditionally. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you really get out here in the world, everybody's not going to love you like that. Mm -hmm. And you expecting a certain kind of love that really only one person can give you. God in yourself. Mm. But when you start searching, when you don't love yourself to the fullest, you start attracting people who are not going to love you to the fullest. Mm. Yeah, They don't have the same value for you. Well, they might have the same value for you because your value for you was love. Mm-hmm. Your value all the way down here. Even, and you know on the inside when you feel like you're more than what you bring, mm-hmm. but you keep on attracting certain type of people. Because yeah. you ain't did the work to really figure out who you are and what do you really love That's about a, yourself. Yeah. That's powerful. Because mm-hmm. why do you we only attract what we are? Yeah. And I yeah. truly believe that. Yeah. There's no reason. I mean, there you get who you date, they be how they be because mm-hmm. it's so many demons in you that you ain't tackled yet mm-hmm. and you keep on trying to go out here and figure it out on your own we don't always have the answers neither do our parents neither do our siblings sometimes all the time first of all you need god you need to go to god pray whatever you need to do pray meditate speak to god and then also go find somebody that you can relate with that shared the same life experience with you that you can connect with and they have an unbiased opinion about your life. Mm. They don't know everything. You giving it all to them. And they can help you navigate through that, through the emotions, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. next steps you could take, how you can be a better person for the person that you want to be. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I truly think that a mentorship is very, very key to life. For sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've watched it change me. Almost mm. overnight. It's, I've had a mentor since August of last year. And my thinking has changed so significantly. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, I have peace in my mind and I have joy in my heart. Mm. I'm able to have conversations with people that I probably wouldn't have had before because whatever reaction they was going to give me, I was going to feed off on it and we was just going to hear for here for here. Now I can really sit back and listen to people understand where they're coming from, how I even made them feel. Mm -hmm. And, okay, was what they're saying attached to the values that I have about myself right now? If so, okay, let me reflect. Do better tomorrow. And there are some things, okay, maybe you got some other things you need to work on inside of you too. Mm -hmm. But we got to learn how to handle people in that way, and we got to learn how to... Uh, be real with ourselves. Yeah. I think the self-reflection is really key, Mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to building a relationship with your parents um, or, you know, whatever parent wasn't there or if both of them wasn't there, hell. Um, The self-reflection is really, I think that's really important because, you know, sometimes we get into these spaces within ourselves and it comes out when we're supposed to have a conversation about our feelings Mm -hmm. with, you know, our parent who hurt us. And it comes out in a way that may be, you know, disrespectful or angry and mm-hmm. everything like that. Um, and I know in cases with myself, I've said things that I didn't really mean to say or I was trying to say it in a different way. And it pissed me off that I didn't get mm-hmm. to say it the way I wanted to. And I felt like, well, now the moment is gone. How do I, you know what I mean? So, when I, so I think that, like, self-reflection is really important. Um, you know, when you're working up the courage to even have these type of conversations. Hell, I would say to even maybe write it down, you no, know. not maybe, write it down. <laughs> write it down, for sure. You know, so you can really have 
um, all your points together when you're uh, trying to have a conversation with uh, your child or your parent. I really, for parents too, I think that it's really important, you know, if you guys, you know, wrote down your feelings as well. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't think that that's just something uh, the child can do. I think it'll help uh, the parents articulate what exactly it is that they're feeling as well. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that uh, um, homework assignment that Charlie gave Janae. I thought that was really good. It was about, um, what, did, what did it say? You know, uh, it was something <laughs> about uh, uh, how can the child be, help the Mother's Day or the Parents Day be better? And all you just have to do is just write down certain little things that can help the day go smoother for the child to know because they don't know either. Mm-hmm. And they don't know how to, um, what's the word? You frustrated, so now I'm frustrated. My, I don't know. You was frustrated first. Now I'm just beating <laughs> off of you. Like, right, right, yeah. Right, right, right. yeah. That's important. You know, I wanted to, you know, you all brought up a lot of great points. And, um, and I want to I want to reflect on this point. Uh, you know, sometimes parents utilize the uh, different arenas. Let's let's take for instance sports. You know, what I mean to throw their kids into sports to help them to cope and deal with certain anxieties or you know certain strain or they you know really trying to get them um, from being beholden to the street life or you know whatever that is. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a fair game. I think that's I think that's fair. However, even even take allowing your child to go play sports, right, is disruptive. Um, is disruptive in if the child goes and plays, you know, sports, but the household is still in shambles. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, it still doesn't give him the opportunity to be able to share with his parents how he feels. Now, he, now he's taking whatever it is, you know, and putting that into a different arena outside of the home. Yeah. Which, which you know, I think I think it's a great opportunity to be able to relieve stress and anxiety, to be able to do it that way. But however, there still has to be. Um, opportunity for that individual to be able to talk to their parents about how they feel, mm-hmm. because just because just just because I'm playing sports, don't mean that I'm being healed. Yeah, mm-hmm. does that make sense? Yeah, that's almost like putting a mask on, so to speak, or a band aid on my wounds. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I get it that you know you 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 want your child to, um, you know, not be attached to certain things in the street life. Mm-hmm. But the question is, what about the home life? Yeah. yeah, and then it's like, what do they grow up to be in their home when they create yeah. a family? Because you right. can create that atmosphere <laughs> for them in the sports arena or any yeah. other type of arena, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, but how do I build relationships? Yeah, And exactly. some of these sports, uh, you know, teachers, you know, help you know, children to be able to build relationships, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But it can never take the place of building a relationship with your parent. Yeah, Yeah. I agree. That is very true. You know, another thing um, that I was going to say was that, um, so you talked about, uh, you know, the kids getting into sports and everything as a way to kind of, cope with whatever they're going through, right? That's what the parent does for them. Um, not necessarily, not necessarily cope, but as the alternative mm. to um, them being um, in certain scenarios that can get them in trouble. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, so I'm going to make sure that my son plays sports. Or I'm going to make sure my daughter, yeah. you know, plays basketball, mm-hmm. you know, or whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? And utilizing that particular skill. But at the same time, if there's mayhem and chaos still mm-hmm. in the household where the parents are always into 
disarray or, or disagreement or whatever it is, is arguing, frustration, you know, fighting or whatever. Um, you know, uh, it doesn't, it, it, it helps the child in one area of their lives. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But relationship wise, as it relates to being able to talk to, uh, you know, the parents um, about how they feel. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I agree. <coughs> I think that um, what I was going to say was that I think the parents could really help, you know, with building emotional intelligence in their children, right? Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. I think that that's really important because... Even with you, when I've had conversations with you, you've said things that I was like, oh, I didn't even think of that. Oh, that's the word for that? Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Like, I didn't even, oh, wait, that's the feeling? You know what I mean? You're, like, literally helping me build my emotional intelligence. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think that, um, you know, when, when, when parents are having conversations with, I think that it's important that parents have conversations with their children mm -hmm. to help them build that emotional intelligence as well, because mm -hmm. that is what's going to help them as well when they go out into the world and, you know, get into relationships and friendships, hell, uh, even in the professional world. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being able to manage and um, be in tune with yourself, I mean, yeah. that's that's really powerful to be able to do that. And be able to have words that express how they feel. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, that's my point. Yeah, yeah be able those to have words. those words because they don't... I mean, a long time growing up, like, Jamila had to tell me that I was experiencing anxiety. I didn't know that that's what that, what that was. That I was. This was back in college. I didn't know what that was. Mm -hmm. I was like, so that's what I've been experiencing this whole time? You know what I mean? So I think that um, a lot of that knowledge, though, can come from having those type of conversations, the parent and the, and the, and the, and the child. Um, mm -hmm. Even, you know, the parents who have been incarcerated, I think that it doesn't, the emotional intelligence doesn't stop, you know, it, it goes with you wherever you are, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, people who, the parents who have been incarcerated have a different um, mindset and can give you a different perspective as well, you know what I mean? On on the world and how things were for them and, you know, yeah, that whole thing. Hmm. <laughs> that's very, that's very, very, very interesting. Um, this whole conversation is, is um, pretty dynamic, you know, and, you know, I think that how do we, so we, 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 we talked, we talked about a lot. Yeah. So what what is the beginning stages, and then, and then what is the beginning stages of being able to have um, a relationship of this magnitude with your child? And let's keep in mind we're not just talking about children, but young adults, teenagers, adults. You know how do you reconcile? You know what I mean? Um, and um, I guess I could begin with the fact that, you know, just having some stability. You know what I mean? And making sure I show up even when I'm not welcome. Right, Jamila? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> even, when, even when I need you to show up, but still, I don't want you to. Oh, right, right, I don't right. want to hear it. Just come here. Just come on. No. Right, right, right. Uh, I would say that asking is the first step from parent or child. Just ask, hey, can we? It don't even have to be, can we have this conversation? Can we go hang out? You want to go? chill for 30 minutes or something, something. Even if they turn you down, even if it's rejection, the thought is still in their head. Mm -hmm. so, and mm -hmm. when you plant that seed, you got to plant certain seed somewhere, somehow, mm -hmm. that they keep thinking about, like, hmm, maybe, okay, he might be cool. <laughs> My mama might be cool. I right. don't know. Right, 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 but right. you got to plant the seed somewhere. And right, right. you can't... Uh, give up just because you don't see the growth. 
in that mm-hmm. moment. Because it took moment. a long... It's in the soil. It's there. It's there. Mm-hmm. It's right. there. You got to keep that water. You, you started something, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you might be the only one watering it for a while. Yeah. <laughs> but eventually you're going to see that little sprout come up. Right, 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 right. right, right. Yeah. That's the baby. Yeah. yeah. That's that little girl or that little boy that felt like they was neglected long ago, and now they finally want to reach out. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you yeah. right there because you've been watering it. Mm-hmm. And that I think that's a great start to it. Wow, mm-hmm. yeah, that's great. I think another great start would be... Um, actually deciding that you need this person or that you need the relationship or that it's important or that it has to go further than where it is right now. Mm -hmm. I think the first step is as well the the want for it. Mm -hmm. So is that on both sides? Is that both the parent and the child? Yeah, both sides. Yeah, Mm -hmm. because you have to also... It has to be a thought in your head. You have to be on some type of journey or want something from yourself in order to initiate this process because mm-hmm. that longing don't leave. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? On both sides, parent or child, it's like you long for that connection and you'll, you're constantly, it's like constantly searching for it everywhere else. And not getting it from the the actual source. The source. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So is it self reflecting first, and then understanding that this is something that you desire, and now I'm gonna take action towards this desire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even if because you know sometimes when you say self reflecting, it's kind of like um, it. It kind of seems. Um, like not difficult, but kind of tasky. Like you know, but really, mm-hmm. self re- in this case, self reflection could could just mean that I want a relationship with my parent or my mm-hmm. child, or I got some things I need to get off of my chest. However, this work out, however it move forward, there the relationship that we have right now cannot exist in order for me to move exactly. forward in my life. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> And and then so, and 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 what if the child don't want to have a relationship with the parent? Been gone so long, feel like a lot of damage is done. You know what I mean? Um, I think that what? Um, I I don't think that anybody ever stops longing for that. Mm. Okay. I don't think we could act like it. We could play pretend. But it's there. You can be known yeah. for the rest of your life mm-hmm. until you up there laying on. The bed waiting to meet your heavenly father, mm-hmm. and you thinking about, dang, I wish, or I woulda, mm-hmm. or I coulda. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I'm, I, I don't think you ever stop longing for your parents, not mom or dad, neither mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and there are some relationships that are pretty messed up, yeah. in which you probably don't want to speak to your parent no more. That don't mean you're not longing for a parent figure. Right. Mm-hmm. That don't mean you, you stop longing for that guidance, that unconditional love. Yeah. yeah. You know, that mm-hmm. reassurance, like the things that create character and value in you, that's what you long for. Mm-hmm. And when you don't have that guidance, yeah. you know, that's how you live the rest of your life the way you do without all of that. And it's mm-hmm. precious. That's why God created it. Yeah. We're supposed to have it. Yeah. And, um, no, go ahead. Oh, it's really small, actually. It's just that I was thinking on the other side of it, you know, as far as being a, a child or the parent, it's like no one gets to determine how you father. Mm-hmm. So if I can still call and check up on my child if I want to. I may I can't cross the boundaries. If you don't want to hear from me, you don't want to hear from me. You might not want to pick up, mm-hmm. but I can call you as your father or as your mother or mm-hmm. as your child because I you're not going to take away my title from me. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean, I'm saying it's, it's, it's kind of sound uh, like pushy, mm-hmm. but I'm just saying when you in that space where you're longing for this relationship, it's like sometimes that pushback can be a little um, disarming or it make you want to be like, you know what, forget it. But the reality of it is that you're not going to ever stop being that parent or mm-hmm. that child. Right. So yeah. it's like, I, if I want to come, if 
if you having a graduation, I'm still here. I still want to go. Like, right, like daddy. Like, he was like, okay, I didn't get invited. Nobody said nothing or whatever. But I'm here. You're not going to stop me from being a father. Right. And I feel like that connection on its own, you know, building up that place, who knows, eventually they could... You look up and they maybe they smiled at you this time because they saw you and they're like, this right. fool, man. <laughs> and we did. We, did. we planted a seed that day. That's what I'm talking about. The yeah. small thing. That was a seed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know what it was going what it was gonna be. You didn't either. All the all the rejection you was getting from me. Right. 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 But it I didn't was know a seed either. in my head that made me understand a little bit that um Maybe I am wanted by him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah he, showed up, uh, <laughs> he showed up to my high school graduation, too. And yeah. he showed up to my plays. I was like, oh, my God. But oh, like, yeah. he never forgot that stuff, though. Right. Like, but never, it wasn't even forget. my stuff. I know, right? But listen, I, one of y'all's uh, thing I showed up to for the pictures, and y uh, I, you know, at that time, I couldn't come around to the house over there. And I was around the corner over there for like hours just that waiting. They problem. kept that was your problem. And they kept saying, Well, she on they on their way and blah blah blah. I said, Man, that was like my own problem. Yeah, she really got too many pictures, so don't take that first. That, no, that's personal. I, I, you know, I remember that day. She, it was hell, it was horrible. Because didn't your dress get messed up or something? You had to get a different dress? It was just It off. was, okay, anyway. Right. Not going uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I was there waiting, waiting, waiting. But you showed up. Yeah, but. You told me, I was yeah, like, right. I'm not even done getting dressed, okay? I'm not right. worried about seeing you. <laughs> right, 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 that part. And, you know, and so, you know, everything that you all have just talked about is so valid. Yeah. You know, um, to be able to speak, you know, from a child's perspective and have an understanding of what the parent's perspective should be. You know, um, I think that we need to iterate the fact that it's not easy. Yeah, no. and it will be you discouraging. Know? Yeah, it can be <laughs> it very can be discouraging, discouraging, man, because, you know, we type people that we want what we want, mm -hmm. and we want it right now. Mm -hmm. You know, and people had to keep encouraging me. You know, because there were times where I felt like, man, listen, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, this rah, rah, right here, man. I ain't, I ain't that guy. You know, but the reality of it is I am that guy. The old me don't want to deal with that part. You know what I mean? Shoot, man, I'm, you know, I'm getting out of how I live. Mm -hmm. But the new me created, you know, you know, in the likeness of Christ and, you know, getting in tune with who I truly am, you know, my true self, my real self, was like, those your daughters. Yeah. Yeah. You gonna run from the fight? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You gonna run? Cause they don't wanna have nothing to do with you. Well, can you understand? Right. Listen, the fact of the matter is that I was absent, so they would you all would feel like I didn't want to have anything to do with you. Yeah, and then you get used to it. And then but <laughs> but mentally, right? Mm -hmm. In your mind as a parent, you know what I mean? You thinking that they don't want to have nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And you ain't thinking the fact you caused that reality. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, your absenteeism caused that reality. Yes. So if they are not thinking like you thinking right now, hey, let's get together and have a great time in this moment, it's because you created that wedge. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you, you can't expect just because you show up on deck. You know, you're coming back on the scene that, you know, it's going to be coffee, cookies, and ice cream. Yeah. It ain't, it ain't going to work like that. And they may have a few choice words, you yeah. know, for you. Yeah. You know, you're going to be a whole lot of things before you feel <laughs> this relationship, though. I can't imagine what child wouldn't have a couple things. Child right. would have yeah. With the Especially absence adult. of a parent. Because mm -hmm. we harbor so many feelings throughout that whole absence. For sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I, shoot. Yeah. It's always going to be, not always going to be some resentment until you talk about it. So yeah, I do, I was resentful. I was mm -hmm. angry. I was hurt. Was neglected. All those things. Like mm -hmm. you just pop up like I'm supposed to smile. <laughs> right. Excuse me. I'm like, right. I've been doing just fine. Right. I'm 18 now. <laughs> right, 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 right. I'm doing just fine. I'm 18 now. Right, 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 right. And, and then reality you get to of a it thing is that where... you ain't doing just fine. Right. right. 
whole time right. And then it might yeah. be an issue where you don't even know what to call your parent. Do I call him dad? Do I call him mom? Mm-hmm. I don't know. You know, what do I call them? So, they ain't never been in my life. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Do I call them? Right, right, right. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's, it, it's just, this is just so interesting, you know. And, then, and so all of that creates an atmosphere um, for healing. Yes. Yeah. You know, yes. um, because sometimes we'd be so locked in, we wouldn't even realize that we're hurting and hurting people hurt people yes that's what i was saying you live at this constant you're so used to your life being a certain way yeah. chaotic and whatever and that's literally you live your life at in chaos yes. you don't even realize it and Aaliyah, you said something that was so profound the other last time we were together and we were talking um you said that uh, you lived in a fantasy just so you don't have to deal with your reality. Oh, yeah. It's easier that way. <laughs> <laughs> That's the easy route. The, the, the That's the easy route. That's the easy. It don't help. <laughs> it ain't helpful for real, but, right. you know, it take right away. Now. Right. I got to come back to reality. I got to be in this present moment. Gosh, you know, but, yeah, yeah it's, it's difficult. I think I, I know, a lot of people that I talk to, like even at my school and everything, it's the same thing for them, you know, um, like living in that fantasy or whatever. You never know what world your child living in or right. your parent living in. You don't know. Mm-hmm. You really don't know. Well, all right, ladies, we going to have to wrap it up. <laughs> wrap it on up. Uh, any, any, any final remarks? Uh, Jamila, let's start with the middle girl. The best thing I can say uh, that helped me is to talk about it. And as scary as it sounds, um, it's really, it's very uh, therapeutic when you do, though. I had to write it down before I talked about it because I didn't have the words to say. I had to write it down three different times just so I could (laughs) get it in the way that I was able to read it and express it and another person would understand it. So I think the biggest, I would say, don't don't keep it in. Mm-hmm. Even if you don't know the right words to say, bring it up. Mm-hmm. Plant the seed. Plant the seed somewhere, even mm-hmm. if it's in anger. Because uh, we want to keep each other in mind. Because we want this relationship to grow. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to keep in mind the fact that I am harboring something. Now, I might not tell you what it is, but I'm angry. <laughs> or whatever it may be. Uh, plant a seed somewhere, somehow. Just help start getting the conversation started. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would just say, feel your feelings. Don't don't judge them. Don't hide them. Don't hold them. Don't the self doubt. Let it all sit, sit all of that to the side and allow yourself to feel your feelings. Grieve the loss that you had experienced as a child. Allow yourself to be there in those moments because you're going to need it. Mm. Yeah. Um, You know, I I guess I would just say that I think forgiveness is a really big part of this. And uh, for the parents, you know, that it ain't, it's not easy to forgive yourself for whatever pain and trauma you may have caused your child. And for the child, it's not going to be easy for you to forgive whatever pain and trauma your parent caused. But I think that, um, you know, starting with what Jamila and Raquel said, that's how you work your way up to that. And it it can lead into, you know, something like this. You know, <laughs> this is growth right here. Absolutely, right? absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, so if you all want what we have... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you know, um, for real, man, if you all want what we have and, you know, in terms of building a relationship and want to learn how to build that relationship and rekindle, you know, whatever you had or maybe you, you know, start something that you didn't have. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Man, tune in with us, man. Yes. You know, Dad, we're incarcerated too. Mm-hmm. You too. know, and, you know, coming soon, we're going to give you guys the opportunity to chime in. You know, and, um, you know, be able to come on the radio 
on the podcast and speak your opinion and your voice. And we're going to have, a, you know, let's have some conversation. Let's chop it up about that <laughs> yeah. part. You know what I mean? Yeah. Have a good old time. You yes. know, right, 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 right. <laughs> but uh, until we see you all again, remember one life, one love, one, one God. God. One God. Peace and blessings. One bed, one sound.